As German tanks moved across Poland, President Roosevelt began to prepare the nation for the possibility of war. The vast majority of Americans did not want to get involved. They believed that U.S. intervention in World War I had been a mistake. But Roosevelt had come to believe that the U.S. needed to take stronger stands to contain fascism and called for preparedness. By summer of 1940, France had fallen and Britain was under siege. Then, in September of 1940, Americans learned that Germany, Italy, and Japan had signed a mutual defense treaty called the Tripartite Pact, making them the Axis powers. Under the treaty, each Axis nation agreed to come to the defense of others in case of attack. It was aimed at keeping the United States out of the war. For, if the United States decided to declare war on any one of the powers, we would be facing a two-ocean war something that they knew we were unprepared for. Those who opposed the Axis powers were the Allied powers. Continued Nazi victories slowly changed American public opinion, and Congress upped defense spending. Then, on September 2, 1940, FDR agreed to transfer to Great Britain 50 destroyers left over from World War I. In return, the British promised to hand over to the United States eight valuable defensive base sites stretching from Newfoundland to South America. The exchange was achieved by a simple presidential agreement, without approval from Congress. Roosevelt also decided to buck tradition and run for a third term as president, which he won handedly. Now, why are these two things significant? They incredibly increased the power of the presidency. Upon winning a third term, Roosevelt's fireside message to the nation was a clear message of warning. He said it would be impossible to negotiate with Hitler, and if Britain fell, the Axis powers would be unchallenged to conquer the world. Therefore, the United States must become a, quote, great arsenal of democracy. By this, he meant that the United States must become a weapons supplier to the Allied nations. Roosevelt made good on his statement when he suggested a new plan called the Lend-Lease Policy. Under the 1941 Lend-Lease Act, the President would lend or lease arms and other supplies to any countries whose defense was vital to the United States. Roosevelt compared his plan to lending a garden hose to a neighbor whose house was on fire. As he put it, if your neighbor's house was on fire, of course you would lend them your hose, if for no other reason than to prevent the fire from spreading to your property. He also gave lend-lease aid to the Soviet Union. Although the Soviet Union was originally allied with Germany, Hitler had broken the agreement he had with Stalin and invaded the Soviet Union. The Lend-Lease Act officially ended U.S. neutrality. In 1941, Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, met secretly aboard a battleship. Although Churchill hoped for a military commitment from the United States, FDR couldn't give him that, not without a declaration of war from Congress. Instead, what emerged from the meeting was a joint declaration of war aims, called the Atlantic Charter. Both countries promised collective security, disarmament, no territorial changes contrary to the wishes of the inhabitants, otherwise known as self-determination. They affirmed the right of the people to choose their own form of government and regain the governments abolished by dictators. They declared freedom of the seas and promised a new League of Nations. Roosevelt told Churchill that he couldn't ask Congress for a declaration of war against Germany, but he would wage war and do everything to force an incident. As this happened, the United States started appropriating $10 billion for arms to send to the British. This was the ultimate stimulus to get the United States out of the Great Depression. The U.S. sent war material over the ocean to the British, so American Navy ships were right alongside the British ships to protect them. As a result, German subs started attacking American ships and killing our sailors. It had become an undeclared naval war by October of 1941.